Hello, I'm Gaby Morris. In the mid-60s, I was a PTA president, and I got to know Carol Sibley while I was working on school elections. Carol was a member of the Berkeley Board of Education from 1961 to 1971, where she became a dedicated leader in integration of the city schools. I'd like to share some of what she told me about her experiences. Carol had worked with young people after college, and she was an active volunteer in the YWCA and many community groups when she moved to Berkeley. In 1961, her friends and neighbors asked her to run for the Board of Education. They wanted to elect a woman to the board. They also wanted to elect a black person, Roy Nichols. During the campaign, Carol asked Reverend Nichols to come with her to house meetings in the hills, and he would invite her when he was going to talk in um, black churches in the flats. My main thrust for running was for excellence for all children. I was thinking of poor children, she said. Many parents were also concerned that tracking, where kids were automatically put in one of as many as 17 different academic levels, was not a good idea. Once she was elected, the board began a series of studies and reports that involved a lot of volunteers in building a consensus that integration was the right thing to do. They were urged on when the NAACP and CORE came to the school board saying, your schools are segregated, you need to do something. Carol said the first step was the Ramsey plan, which put all the ninth grade students in one school. Another volunteer committee did a report on de facto segregation that made the board realize the tremendous differences in the schools. And finally, integration became their aim. Next, they brought in Neil Sullivan from Virginia as superintendent. His goal was elementary school integration, which began with the Head Start program in the summer of 1964, which included the help of parents of children in the program. Several big public meetings were held to discuss Neil's plans, and Carol spoke up in favor of them. Some parents got up and said, if you go ahead with this, we will recall you from office, which they set out to do. I hope I never have to go through anything like that again, she said. People in my church wouldn't speak to me. I got nasty telephone calls and letters using dirty words I'd never heard. The same year, a school tax increase was passed for the first time in years, and that provided money for libraries in every school, smaller class sizes, more teacher training, and better salaries. But then, some people got up at a board meeting and said the elementary schools should be integrated sooner, in 1967. There was a big to-do, and some board members wanted to fire Neil. Others said, we want to do this right. If we do it in a half-baked way, it'll fail. Finally, the school passed a resolution that we would do it not later than September 1968. When the plan for elementary school integration was ready, Carol said, it's one of the most carefully designed things she'd ever known. We all breathed a huge sigh of relief, she said, the day that the schools were all open and there was no hitch, except one child who they couldn't find for the bus because he was in the bathroom. We knew that building a good school system is an ongoing process, she added. But things change. Soon after integration, the emphasis shifted and the school district got off on experimental schools. There were black studies committees and Asian studies committees and Chicano studies coming along. But she added, I don't think there was ever the same careful planned way of making it work. Carol got off the board in 1971. I certainly wasn't gonna stick around and tell them how to run the school board, she said but I still think the complete dedication to making it work didn't continue. We got off in too many directions, but that's just hindsight. I don't think it was anyone's fault.